Hi friends, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how you can create a weekly digital planner for 2024. And what's new is that we now have added the weekly tabs here on the sides of the monthly calendar and they also are clickable. So if you for example click here on the second week of January, it will go to the second week of January like you see here. And also here all the tabs are clickable. If you now for example click somewhere on the February calendar, let's say you want to go to the week where 28 is, then you can just click on it and then it will redirect to the weekly where the day 28 is like for example here. And then all the tabs here on the sides are clickable as well. And then you can also click within the calendar. So if you, for example, want to go to the weekly page where um, April 12th is, then you can also click, for example, on, on number 12. And this will redirect to the weekly page where you will find April 12th right here. This is a very simple tutorial because we will not be linking any pages because we have a new feature called auto linking. And if you would like, you can then also sell the finished planner in your Etsy shop if you are a seller. So let's get started. First, very important is to open up a new private mode in Firefox. Firefox is the best browser to use for Planify Pro. And here on the upper right corner, you can click to open up a new private mode window and this will just make sure that you're running the newest version with all the updates. Okay, once you are logged in, click on create a new planner. Next, click on layout, then digital planner and then click on show a digital planner layout. As of right now, we only have the horizontal version, but we are working on a vertical one page version. So that one should be coming soon. Next, let's click on a new background type. Let's choose a new one. I'll go with the truffle twirl, but you can choose any background you like. And then for the spine type, I'll go with number 11, which looks like the following. Next, let's bring in the sides on the outer padding. You can click to bring in the sides just like this. And then next, let's set up all the tabs. So I highly recommend you setting up all the tabs for your entire planner in the beginning. This way you can automatically link the pages while you're working on your planner. To add tabs, click on add tab button right here. And I'll be adding seven tabs to the left and to the right side. And the first one, I'll call it calendar. This will be the first page. And then we continue with all the monthly tabs. And you can also create additional tabs if you like. So if you want to make any notes, pages or to-do lists or additional planners, you can also add additional tabs here to the sides. On the right side, again, seven tabs. And then here we have July, August, September, October, November and December. Actually six tabs would be enough. So I'll delete the seventh tab here. And then next let's make the tabs bigger. Click here on the wider width. You can make them bigger like this. And the corner radius can be set to two. Or you can just make the corners as rounded as you like. And then next, let's also change the font of the tabs. I'll go with this font right here. And then I'll make it smaller just like this. Okay, this looks fine. And then next, let's go back to the tabs. And this step is very important, one of the most important steps. So here you see that on auto, all the tabs are set to detect a month which is correct for all the tabs because all the tabs we have here are monthly tabs. But the word calendar um, is not a monthly tab. This would be considered a text. So if you have any tabs um, with a name such as index or calendar or notes or to do or finance or anything else, make sure you set it to detect a text. And for the rest, which are the monthly tabs, you can click, you can set it to detect for the month. And this only works for the English language. Okay, now on the left side, let's open up the multiple page menu. And the very first page will be the calendar page for this tab right here. So we will need to rename this page to calendar. So if you now write in here, calendar, 
the linking system will be able to detect the page calendar and it will automatically link it to this tab. And this only applies to notes pages or to-do lists, but this will not apply to the monthly pages. So you don't need to rename your monthly pages. You just need to make sure that um, for the calendar page, it has to be written here calendar. Okay, now let's work on the calendar page. Go to template starter. If you want, you can also create your own, but I think it's much easier to work from starter templates. Here on the side, we have starter yearly. So click on it and then here you can insert a calendar for the entire year if you would like to have one. I will go with um, this one here. This one's a new template. And what's special about this one is that this one also automatically has um, the weeks in it. You can click on skeleton to insert the template and you will see that there now is like this additional column where you have the weeks within a monthly calendar, which you then can click to redirect to that weekly page. If you, for example, select a different planner, such as maybe this one here, where you don't have the weeks inside yet, um, to insert the weeks, you can simply click on the widget and then in the settings, you can scroll down to month and here you can select to add the weeks just like this, click on left side and then you can choose if you want to display them in numbers from one to 52 weeks or just like uh, week one, two, three, four, five and so on. Okay, so you can choose between these and then you would um, adjust every single widget like you did with January. But for this tutorial to be more simple, I'll just go with the pre-made template. Um, it's right here, this one right here. And I will just click on skeleton. Okay. Next, let's also change the styling. If you want, you can take over the styling from the starter templates by clicking on style. This will take over the font, the color and the styling. However, I would like to have more of a minimal style. So I'll go next to style up here and then I'll choose a new one, which is the classic two style, which just has a simple black line. If you want, you can further adjust the colors up here, which will change the colors of all widgets, or you can also change the fonts under text H2 which I will be doing. So let me quickly select a new font. I will be selecting this one right here. And then also making it smaller. And then if you want, you can also make the gap between both sides smaller. So if you now go back to layout and digital planner all the way down here below, you can also adjust the inner padding, which is the padding you see between these two sides. So we can reduce the padding so we can get more space for the widgets and reduce it to maybe 0 0.16 inches. And this is how it would look like. Then if you want, you can also add patterns and decorate your planner. I will be selecting under fixed colors this pattern right here called Peonies um, 3 underline 39. And I will apply this one as a header. Um, as a header, which looks like this. And then once you're happy with your template, you can click on duplicate page to add a second page. Now on the second page, you want to go back to template and then you want to go to the monthlies this time. And now let's create our monthly planner. I'll be going with this planner right here. Of course, you can also create your own monthly planner or you can choose one of these planners we have here and then further customize it, such as changing widgets or adding some widgets to the layout. Um, here, what you will have to check is if your monthly calendar has the weeks displayed like we had here. If you don't see any weeks, you can then click on the monthly calendar and then you can scroll down and here, like I showed you before, you can click on left or right side um, to insert the weeks like this. And then choose if you want to display them in numbers or in weeks like the following here. Once you have your monthly planner completed, make sure it's in January 2024. So make sure the first month is correct. And you can then click on the dot 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 button down here below 
and you can tell it to duplicate the page 11 times. Type in here 11 and then select a speed. I'll be selecting 0.8 seconds. This means the program will wait 0.8 seconds until it moves on to the next page. Let me show you. Here um, it now creates all the pages in total 11 pages and it also changes the date and between adding pages it will add 0.8 seconds and depending on how complicated your planner is you might want to adjust the speed to be slower so if you have many widgets if it's a big planner or your internet connection is slower you might want to increase the speed so it gets more time to create the pages for you before moving to the next one. Now I have 13 pages in total. Here, this is the last page, December 2024. Let's duplicate this page and next let's create the weekly planner. I'll go to weekly dated. Here are the weeks with the dated date flags and then choose a weekly planner you like. You can choose from many different kinds of weekly planners. I'll go with this one right here and you can also further customize it. So you don't have to have it like this. For example, if you want to extend the weekly schedule here, you can go to edit layout up here and here you can further customize the layout. So you can click on any widget and then uh, you can also extend other widgets into this empty field just like this. We can also, for example, remove these two widgets down here below so we can have a big space for a schedule. So this could be helpful if this planner is meant for students, for example. Or you can also adjust the lists. So if you want the lists to be to have maybe rounded icons like this, then you can do that as well. We can also increase or decrease the amount of rows. So just customize the planner uh, like you wish, but I will simply go back to the star template like we had it here. This one right here, I'll re-click on skeleton to bring in the original and I'm happy with how the planner looks like. I just would like to change the pattern here because I think it might be too much. If you want to change the pattern as well, you can click here on pattern. And then next you can either choose a different kind of pattern or you can click on none to remove it. I'll still have a pattern showing, but I will choose a different type right here. There is something called top and bottom variation and this will add you a pattern which looks like the following. And in order to see the pattern better, we will need to adjust the margins of this page. You can do that by going to layout planner and here is where you can adjust the top padding. So you can increase the top padding to add more space between the top widgets and the sides on top. Here I have increased or set the top padding to 0 0.7 inches, 0 0.77 and this added some space here to the top. You can also do the same for the bottom just like this. And now you see more um, from the top padding and the bottom padding. And then last step is to check if all the dates and calendars are correct. We can click here on December and then set it back to January 2024. If you want, you can also insert the weeks into this calendar. So here let's insert the weeks. Next, you also want to adjust the date flags. Make sure edit layout is set to off and then you can click on the date flag for this menu to show up and you can set it to start in January 1st like this. And then for the next flag, you want it to also be in January, but January 2nd and then simply adjust every single date flag so it's correct for that week. Um, you only will need to do this for the very first week in your digital planner. If you want, you can also change the styling of the date flags. You can go under style, there you can choose a new one. I'll be choosing this one right here. If you like, you can also adjust the font size. Um, I will go or set it to around um, maybe 17 for each one of them. 
Okay, there we go. Make sure your very first weekly page is correct date wise. Make sure the calendar is in January 2024 and also make sure that all the date flags are in January. You can also click on them to check again if everything is correct. And once everything is correct, you can then click on the dot 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 button down here below. Select 52 weeks and then click to duplicate and change date 52 times. And this is basically all you need to do. It will now add your new pages, change the dates and it will also automatically link all pages for you. It is now completed. Last step is to go to Safe Export. Click on Single Pages. Click Normal or Fast. I'll have Normal selected and then go through all pages. And once this is completed, you can then simply click on Batch Genre PDF to export your planner. The reason why you want to sync all pages before exporting is just to make sure that your PDF will be flawless and that all pages will be synced correctly in the exported PDF file. Okay, it has completed. Let's click on Digital. So here in the Export menu, All Pages Digital. This menu have it selected. Click on Batch Genre PDF. Let's click on Download PDF. Here it is. You will see that all the days here are clickable. So if you now click on March 5th, it will go to the weekly page where there is March 5th, just right here. And then I can also click here on the weeks to go to week 12 in March. And then I can also go to the 13th week, 14th, 15th, 16th, 17th. If I now click on the days itself, they will redirect back to the calendar. Here in the calendar, I can also click um, within it. So if I want to go to where April 19th is, I can click on it. It will redirect to that week. Um, all the tabs here on the sides are clickable as well. So let's check out those if everything looks fine. And this is how to create a digital planner for 2024 with just weeks in it. I hope this tutorial was helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to always message me on Instagram or Facebook and I will try to respond to your questions as quickly as I can. Bye!